So today I'm going to be talking about rugby. This is going to be kind of like a live coding session because I'm just going to put a game on in the background <laughs> and desperately try to teach you all the rules while it's happening. So rugby is um, similar to American football, which is also known as gridon football. Um, in the, the goal is to score the most points. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Uh, the way you score points is by getting the ball to the other, your opposition's end of the field and um, touching the ball to the ground. Um, in rugby, you always have to pass the ball backwards. So um, what's happening here is that people are... Uh, Wales is in red and England is in white and England is um, constantly trying to pass the ball down the line to get around the other team. Um, Wales just got given a penalty and I don't know why. Uh, but the way penalties work is that you can take a kick uh, from where the penalty happens. Often if you're in the opposition's half, you'll try and score a penalty. Now the way you score a penalty is by kicking the ball in between the posts at your opposition's end of the field, and that will score you three points. There are three ways to score points in rugby. Uh, scoring a penalty gets you three points. Scoring a drop kick is the same, except it happens during gameplay. So you kick through the posts, and that also scores you three points. The final way is like what you'd call a touchdown, uh, but in rugby is called a try. That gets you five points. And once a try is scored, uh, they will uh, then have a chance to score a conversion, which involves taking the ball back um, to the 20-yard line and kicking from there. What does that score for, the conversion? Uh, two points. This is way harder than I know. <laughs> 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 uh, is there a dedicated kicker? Or is whoever so generally it's the scrum half is the dedicated to give it so the <laughs> <laughs> so the scrum half is uh, so on your team you're basically split into either being in the scrum or in the line uh, so when you're in the scrum also called the forwards those are the bigger guys in the game and they're doing so like this guy this number number eight is a forward um, and they'll their main focus is defense, so they're usually tackling or making big hits. Um, and the line are the guys in a line, spread out the back, and their goal is to move the ball quickly to outmaneuver the other team and make a break through their defense. Uh, men, uh, people in the scrum also are sometimes wearing uh, the scrum caps. Uh, this is because when you uh, force a scrum, when a scrum happens, uh, the teams will bind uh, together. And what tends to happen is if you don't wear a scrum hat, your um, ears tend to get pulled a lot. So, um, yeah, it's to avoid something called cauliflower ears where your ears just fall apart slowly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is it like soccer where the play doesn't stop until there is a penalty? It's just kind of yeah, so the, and that's the big difference between rugby and American football is that the, um, the rules are trying to keep the ball in play for a, as long as possible. Um, so that was a line out. When the ball goes off the edge of the pitch, you have a line out. Um, each team can dedicate as many players as they want to the line out. And basically the teams line up and whoever's throwing the ball in has to throw it down the middle of each team. Um, when they get stuck like that, how do they know whose ball it is? So there's, when the ball goes to the ground, usually what forms is called a ruck. So this, this, <laughs> <laughs> this is a ruck and you're, you're not allowed to um, kill the ball. So you're not allowed to like jump straight onto it and like just lie on the ball 
be like, this is mine. You have to allow the ball to come out. But you cannot join a ruck from um, the sides. You have to join from the back of your, uh, of your teammate who is furthest back in the ruck. So you, and the only time you can, once a ruck is formed, you cannot use your hands to, at all, inside the ruck. So you have to, <laughs> so one, once the, How are they getting the ball out? so once, once you've joined a ruck, you can't use your hands. So you join a ruck to push the opposition off of the ball. So, yeah, so like players will like pile in from either side. You'll try and push people over to reveal the ball. And then usually your scrum half or fly half. So I can't use his hands. So. <laughs> That's a rule, huh? Yeah, so there is a tendency to break the rules. <laughs> and it's okay as long as the ref didn't see it, basically. So there's a golden rule in rugby, which is um, the rules of whatever the ref says. Um, so there's a tendency, like, even when a ref makes a bad call, people will just respect that call. And they'll... Um, it's one of the things I love about rugby is that people don't chat back. There's no like, oh, I think you made the wrong call, this is bullshit. You know, oftentimes players just walk away being like, I have no idea what happened, but there's a penalty now, so. <laughs> How do they decide when to kick it? Is there a set number of goes, or do they just... So you can only, um, the only way you can pass the ball forward is by kicking it. Um, but once, as soon as you kick the ball and it moves forward, everyone who's in front of the guy who kicked the ball on your team is offside. So they can't run to get the ball. Only the guy who kicked it can. And they all have to wait for him to pass them. So in American football, you might have someone run past and you'll throw a ball to get to them. You can't do that in rugby. Uh, this is a scrum. Uh, scrums sometimes collapse like that, and the ref gets angry. Um, but scrums are awarded for minor infractions to the rules. Uh, and penalties are for major infractions. Um, if you do something really bad, like, I don't know, kick a guy in the head, um, that would lead to a yellow card. Those are the ways of the player. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so scrum is made up of... Um, what is the point here? So uh, the... <laughs> Wales has been awarded the scrum, so they get to um, feed in the ball. And the point is to push the opposing team off of the ball. You can't use your... Yeah, you that's a... Something. Try! That's a try. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when a, a, a scrum, like a ruck, you can't, can't use your hands while in the scrum. So, uh, you have to... Uh, f try and scrape the ball back with your feet. Um, the reason there's an advantage is if, if your team is feeding in, is uh, you can decide uh, how far or how shallow it's going to be fed in, like directly into the middle of the scrum, or which is a really minor advantage, because you still have to feed it in straight. So he, he could reach in and pick up the ball because he wasn't involved in the scrum. He wasn't um, bound to his other players. Why didn't you just go down right there? Uh, because when you uh, get awarded a conversion, uh, it's like directly back in a straight line from where you scored the try. So you want to score um, as close to the center as you can. Running with the thing yeah. Like, hmm. So it it's is. Like a big match for the ball. It, it is definitely um, a game of attrition. We also there's only um, I think four substitutions throughout a game. So you, so we don't have like any of this swapping the whole team off and on, and switching players in and out. Um, it's also the only game I know of. So if five people break their leg on your team. <laughs> You're screwed. Okay. You can have more people on the bench, but you won't be able to suck them in. Can you pass sideways, or does it actually have to be backwards? 
Yeah. It can be sideways. Okay. So but that's a real fine line. Yeah. So at some point they kick it, but and they know the other team is getting the ball. Yeah, so you're giving away possession that's fine. Okay. when you kick it. Um, but sometimes it's worth it because you can gain a loss of ground. So it's like a point. Yeah. So that was a uh, maul that turned into a ruck. As soon as the, like, a maul is while the ball is uh, not on the ground. And the rules, the, there's a difference in rules between a uh, ruck and a maul, which is really complicated and convoluted. And not a lot of people know all of the rules around rucks and mauls, which leads to referees interpreting the game differently. So the referee you have might... Oh, that's a fine line right there. <laughs> might religiously follow particular rules and not others, which means that during a game you have to work out what rules the ref is playing to <laughs> and use that to your advantage. So... So, so it's like plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they could... Somebody could just drop kick it right now into the goalposts, right? They could, but they... They're, prob so they're probably hoping to get a try, because okay. a drop kick will only get them three points, okay. and a try is a possible seven. They never, they never pass the ball like one side and then back the other way. Can you not do that? You can do that. Okay. Yeah. Like, they never go back to the right here, so it's like they went all the way to the left. It's, it's sort of a rugby basic that usually when you're, um, when you're passing down, you're trying to bunch up your opposition's defense. And going the other way, they tend to be prepared for that. Whereas they're not prepared for you to outrun them on the outside. Um, but you will see um, frequently in games, a quick pass back scores a try. Because what they're trying to do is open up space. Yeah, that's an injury. <laughs> okay, so, so rugby... Rugby is also the only game I know of that has a special rule um, called a blood substitution, where you, you're allowed to substitute a player off of the pitch so that he can stop bleeding and sub someone on. And as long as they can stop the bleeding within three minutes and move, put him back on the pitch, it doesn't count as a substitution. But what happens here is they actually call a timeout and they just are going to patch him up on the pitch. So is there a pretty big market for like medics? Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of medics. Um, when I uh, played rugby at school, um, at most matches there would be an ambulance ready, just in case. Um, just getting ready to go back on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? He doesn't. He has no idea where he is. <laughs> One minute left. Uh, least it's it's <laughs> so it was it you you were saying something, I think it was you telling me about about oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, oh, like they don't like to hit hard, right? It like or fast and hard. It's more like the power of like pulling someone down. Right. Rather than like a quick hit. So you do want to hit hard but there's also there's also rules where you can't hit uh, above the shoulders yeah. um you can't um like you can't pick someone up and like drive them into the ground yeah. that's not allowed um like as opposed to american football where like if some guy's catching it like somebody would just bam like hit him in the air and then just take him oh out. yeah it's more likely that they'll grab onto them and like pull them down you're, since they're not jumping up for passes. Yeah, and you're not going to hit as hard because they don't have this protection that, that you guys have. And they don't they don't have uh, helmets on or anything, so they're a little more concerned about like breaking their necks and yeah. So so there's concern over uh, in in American football about head injuries and like serious like Problems with sustained, you know, Impact. Blood, blood trauma. Yeah. Um, how like is, is that a, a really big problem here with no padding? So actually, it you'd think it would be, but it tends not to be. Um, people, uh, players end up 
usually playing professional rugby into their late thirties. So they're doing it for a sustained amount of time and there haven't been, you know, horrific reports of um, their lives being ruined. And this, this is a game that has been played for, you know, um, since the 1845 or something. It seems like you'd be far less likely to use your head as a weapon because you don't hear Yeah, because it's not protected. <laughs> So that that, I, also, I also think there's, there's slightly more concern about hurting someone else because, because it, it could be really easy to like, destroy someone's life by breaking their back or you know, inflicting a serious in injury. I think rugby players do tend to take that really seriously. So... The pass in from out of bounds, is that the same idea as the roll in for the yeah. like you have to get in the middle? Down the middle and like and again, so this is England's throw in and you'll notice that England's line are gonna a couple of the people are gonna run backwards <laughs> and forwards. The hey, ballerina lifted in. <laughs> <laughs> so some people are gonna run backwards, some people are gonna run forwards, and that's to cause confusion in the other team. So that they don't know where the ball's coming. And then before they can realize what's happening, one guy jumps up and is lifted, and he receives the ball. So can you not jump on your own, or is that just they're helping? You can, but obviously if you're taller than everyone else, you're more likely to get the ball. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're also not allowed to tackle the guy until his feet touch the ground. Can they carry him? No. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think as well. <laughs> Oh, so you can always kick it forward. Yeah. Even if it's not in the air. What's the uh, time? Is it 90 minutes? It's 40 minutes each. Um, minutes. Each half. And it's, it's usually... I mean, there's not a lot of time out, so... so do they have extra time and things like that? They, tend, they do, but it doesn't often come up. There's usually... Um, because the point system is a little odd people usually don't end up on the same school. So, for some reason, they've painted parts of the field with advertising. Um, what are they trying to do here? Is this under video review or something? No, this is just a replay to show what happens. Because no matter how he gets there, even if someone's holding him back, if he gets the ball... On the ground. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a try. Yeah. <laughs> Two for a conversion. So, like, this is not great because he scored right at the edge of the pitch. So, this is a tough. Is there any instance where they can, they can carry it in and get some points at this point? Like, you know, like. Oh, like pick out. No, you have to like kick, kick for a minute. Else has, like, no. Once, once the ball um, comes out of the air, then you have to reset back to the um, halfway line. Uh, the opposing team has to wait there until he starts running towards the ball and then they can... Wow. Oh! <laughs> so close. Heartbreaking. They can charge him down. So that's it, 15 minutes. I, hopefully you guys know enough about the game now that if you were to see it in a bar, you might actually watch it. Yeah. I watch it, I just never know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> this seems so much more stressful than the other sports. I don't know. Like blood injuries and like three minute count. And... <laughs> it's, it's hockey. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Are you allowed hockey, to like yeah. cauterize? <laughs> <laughs> like Man. just only if something <laughs> severed. Like people running in with like hot irons. Yeah, and hot iron. Yeah, I feel like that would be the hot iron guy. Like, you, I think that's a new innovation for the game. I think they just spray on like pa plastic. Or at least like that's if it's like almost three minutes, you're like we need the, we need the iron guy. Like get in. He's like, just, like, just waiting all game. Like right. right. Like not so not even like a um, like a poker. Just like what I'd iron my shirt with. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, close it up. Yeah. Basically, it's yeah. 
So as, as far as I'm aware, that hasn't happened, but... Yeah, <laughs> matches. room for innovation here. Yeah. So there's a World Cup, is there? So this was the uh, first uh, game of the Six Nations, which is a cup. Um, and this was England v Wales, and uh, this was on Saturday. There were three games played last weekend, and I think there's two this weekend. What are the Six Nations? Uh, so I think half of them are in um, Great Britain. Scotland, England, Wales? Yeah, Scotland, England, Wales, Ireland. Uh, all teams, and then um, France and somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I can't remember if South Africa is in the Six Nations. 